Hello everyone, I uh, wanted to come read y'all this uh, Luke chapter 16. Uh, it's got a couple of stories that uh, Jesus liked to tell people and, you know, show them, give them a picture or illustration of what he's, the point he's trying to get across. Because sometimes when you plainly tell people, they can't get it. You know, they can't get it unless they get a visual or a story, you know. So a lot of times when people are artists or, you know, uh, write poetry, things like that, you know, uh, some people will get that more than they'll get just the basic words, you know, because it's entertaining or, you know, uh, captures their, their, makes them think, you know, think a little bit. So Jesus always wants you to think deeper than what he's saying, you know, so he wants you to listen to what he's saying, analyze it, and he wants you to get to the depth of what he's saying. And we all know Jesus is very deep, so it's kind of hard to get there, but, you know, we can do it. Just have to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, for his guidance and, you know, his wisdom in order to understand the scriptures. So uh, this is Luke chapter 16, and this is the story of the shrewd manager. Jesus told this story to his disciples. A rich man hired a man manager to handle his affairs, but soon a rumor went around that the manager was thoroughly dishonest. So his employer called him in and said, What's this I hear about you stealing from me? Get your report in order because you're going to be dismissed. The manager thought to himself, Now what? I'm through here and I don't have the strength to go out and dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. I know just the thing. And then I'll have plenty of friends to take care of me when I leave. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I hope owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, tear up that bill and write another one for 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. A thousand bushels of wheat was his reply. Here, the manager said, take your bill and replace it with the one for 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the citizens of this world are more shrewd than the godly are. I tell you, this is this true, uh, and it... And it is true that the citizens of this world are more shrewd than the godly are. I tell you, use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. In this way, your gener gener generosity stores up a reward for you in heaven. Unless you are faithful in small matters, you won't be faithful in large ones. If you cheat even a little, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrusty with worldly wealth... Who would trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's money, why should, why should you be trusted with money of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who dearly loved their money, naturally scoffed at this. Then he said to them, You look, you like to look good in public, but God knows your evil hearts. What this world honors is an abomination in the sight of God. Until John the Baptist began to preach, the law of Moses and the messages of the prophets were your gods. But now the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and eager multitudes are forcing their way in. But that doesn't mean that the law has lost its force in even the smallest point. It is stronger and more permanent than heaven and earth. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. All right, so let's discuss... Some of the things we have a shrewd manager. Uh, he's so shrewd. He's dishonest. He's taking money and 
cheating people out of their money and everything. And it's not until his manager said, hey, you're fired. You know, you, you've been dishonest. It's not until then that he actually gets the point. And uh, when well, he's still looking out for himself, he's still shrewd. But it's basically telling you, you know, you're going to have to use your resources. You live in this world. You're going to have to use your resources. Now, the people who are ungodly are going to have less of a of a heart for people. And they're going to be more shrewd. They're, you know, they're going to be, you know, it said that the snake or the uh, the serpent in the in the Garden of Eden was the shrewdest of all animals. Meaning it's lying, cunning, uh, deceptive, things like that. And, uh, you know, those are the things that godly people are not supposed to be. Um, but there are people like that, you know, and, uh, and it's things you have to use your you have to use your resources and things in order to to promote to promote the kingdom and, uh, you know, to make things good for your life. Also, you know, uh, and I mean, the, the 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 manager, he he had to go and kind of make those things. But at the same time, he was thinking of himself. But. At the same time, he was thinking, okay, well, if I help these people out, you know, if I half, you know, halfing their, all of their things that they have, you know, all of their debts that they have to my master, if I half in those things, you know, uh, I'll have friends, you know, that help me, you help me out when I'm on my, on my going down, you know, because I'm getting fired. I don't have no more income coming in. And he's saying, shoot, I'm not digging no ditches. I'm not doing construction work. I'm not doing any of that. Because that's not my style. That's not how I do it. I'm too old. I'm too prideful. I've been at this high position. I'm not going to go back to to doing anything, you know. So, you know, but the the manager, the, 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 the person who owned the business, he couldn't do nothing but respect that, you know, um, that he had done that, you know. So you have to use your resources, basically, you know. We have to be smart in this world. We have to use common sense and we have to be use our resources and the things in this world in order to, to live and take care of ourselves because this is a cursed world you know this is a curse the ground is cursed and we have to keep digging and digging until we find soil that we can plant in you know that's just the curse of this world that's what happened when Adam and Eve fell that's what happened you know the human race fell the world fell you know wouldn't be all these tornadoes and earthquakes and things if Adam and Eve hadn't fell you know um that the bad things happen because this is a cursed world, so we can expect always expect the bad things, but we have to be strong through that. All right, uh, and so this is also talking about you know uh, rich people and things like that also. So we about to get to one of my favorite stories, which is uh, the rich man and Lazarus, and uh, this will show you you know the rich people, the ones who look down upon poor people and. Uh, step on them, you know, have all the money in the world to save people, and they don't do so. You know, nobody's owed anything, you know. But if a person keep coming to your door every day, you got a million dollars, and you know that they have nothing. You saw them sleeping on the street the other night, and you know you could help them people, like, easily. thousand dollars out of a million easily could have helped them, you know. But you would rather have that person, you know, get killed in the middle of the night or, you know, freeze to death or, you know, starve to death. You know, when they just come into your door asking for some food, some scraps, you give them dog food for, all, you know, something, you know, to keep them living. But you don't because you have no heart for them. You think that you have everything you need and you don't need God and you don't need and you, you don't need people. So you treat them badly. And, you know, I'm going to show you all the results and what happens when you think and act like this. The rich man and Lazarus. Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed and who lived each day in luxury. At his door laid a diseased beggar named Lazarus. As Lazarus laid there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the beggar died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham. So off top, you're seeing that uh, being poor, rich, but when you poor and you know you're a good person, you believe in God, the angels protect you. They come. It's not about, it's in this kingdom, it's not about money. It's not about that kind of status. It's about being humble. And you probably got a better chance to get into heaven if you're poor because it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camera to pass through the eye of a needle. 
And that's very hard to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's better to be poor, you know, or not to be rich because then you have to depend on God so much. You know, that's just that's just what it is, you know. <laughs> that's just what it is. But I believe that it's better to be poor before you're rich. So you'll know, you know, where it's coming from. And you'll know how hard it was to get there. And you won't take it for granted, you know. Uh, so... Let me see. Uh, finally, the beggar died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And his soul went to the place of the dead. So off top, you're saying that we have uh, the, the rich man who didn't help anybody, didn't care about anybody, but his riches and lived in luxury every day. And he went to the place of the dead, which is also hell or the place not of the living, not where the living God is. You know, God's presence is everywhere, even in hell. But the thing is, is uh, you're separated from that because he's still he, God runs everything. Basically, you know, he created everything, created the depths of hell, you know, so he's regulating everything, you know, but his you won't be able to be connected with his presence in the place of the dead in hell. And once you go there, there's no coming back. So you got to do what you got to do here while you're here. That's, this is your time. This is your trial period. If you don't get it here, you're not going to get it. All right. Uh, so the rich man also died and was buried, and his soul went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Lazarus in the far distance with Abraham. So this is saying that, you know, while you in hell, you're going to be able to actually see the other side, which is the good side, the side that, you know, you want to be on, the place of the living, the heaven, the place of God, the waiting place for God, he, you know, the heavenly realms. And um, that's where you want to be. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in anguish in these flames. Now, he want Lazarus, the person, he never helped at all. He want him now down at the end place of the dead, and Lazarus is living in luxury and comfort, what he didn't live in, in in this earth. But now he's died, and he's living in that luxury and clothing great, you know, just feeling good. You know, he's great. He's in a great place, and Lazarus is, is in the opposite spot. Now they've switched spots. They've died, and now they've switched spots, basically. And, and it's totally opposite. So now... You know, Lazarus, I mean, sorry, the rich man is saying he wants Lazarus to have a heart and God to have a heart, but he never had a heart for nobody. So it's basically, you know, God is a just judge. So once you get there, it's no it's no turning back. So you got to do what you got to do now. Let's see. Um, let's see. Send Lazarus over here and dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because I am in anguish from these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus has nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm or separating us, or gulf separating us. Anyone who wanted to cross over to you from from here is stopped at its edge and no one there can cross over to us the rich man said please father abraham send him to my father's home for i have five brothers and i want him to warn them about this place of torment so they won't have to come here when they die but abraham said moses who died once again he died a long time ago abraham but he's still living the living god this is this is god but Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them, your brothers can read their, read their warnings and writings any time they want to. The rich man replied, no, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, they will turn from their sins. But Abraham said, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even if someone rises from the dead. And, you know, this is just, you know, just like, I mean, if they don't listen to Jesus, basically like this. If you don't listen to Jesus, you're not going to listen to anybody. You know, he came, he did all the miracles, things nobody ever did. So if you don't even listen to him, you're not going to listen to Abraham. You're not going to listen to the Bible. Then you're not going to listen to anybody. Everything that you need is in the Bible. It's nowhere else. And that's all you have to do, man. 
So I love y'all. Just wanted to holler at y'all, man. God bless. Happy Mother's Day.